I don't generally care about covering distros. However, that doesn't mean I'm not paying attention to what's happening in this space. There are some distros like Vanilla OS, which I think are trying out a lot of really cool tech. Tech that is way cooler than the distro itself. You have things like AB Root, a whole new system for making an immutable Linux distro. And also you have Apex, the package manager of vanilla OS, which I only call a package manager because that's what the dev calls it. I wouldn't call it that whatsoever. It's not a package manager in the traditional sense, in the modern sense, like a flat pack, it's more like a meta container manager with a focus on packages. The reason why I say this is it doesn't actually install packages. What it is, is a convenient front end for DistroBox and inside of DistroBox, that's where the packages are being installed. Apex just gives you an interface that feels like a package manager and pretends to be a package manager basically for user convenience. Now, if you haven't seen my video on DistroBox, basically what it is, is a wrapper for Docker or Podman. These tools are typically used for deploying an application on a server in a containerized fashion. So you don't have to worry about, you know, application dependencies, anything like that. You just take the Docker container and you go and you're good with it. But DistroBox opens up this containerization basically to make them easily integrate into your host systems. And with a few exceptions, you can pretty much install anything you want in that container, and it's gonna work like it does as if you installed it on your system normally. Now, using Apex is absolutely dead simple. If you've used apt, if you've used Flatpak, it's all gonna seem fairly familiar. Let's install something I know I don't have available on my system. GVim. Now, by default, when you install something with Apex, it's going to be done inside of an Ubuntu container. So, I believe the package in that one is called vim-gtk3. When you first run a command and no container exists, it is going to take time to go and generate the container. If you have a container, but haven't started it on this boot of the system, it's going to have to go and start up the container. And then once the container is running, then it can go and run the command inside of it. The absolute first command is always going to take a long time though. And now we're inside the container. Let's go and say yes. It's going to take some time to go and download it. And then once that's done, I'll show you it running. Awesome. Now all we need to do to run it is run apex, run, and then the name of the application. Even though the package is called vim gtk3, the application is still called gvim. And if we run this, it's not actually going to work. It's going to say authorization required, but no authorization protocol specified. And it's not going to launch the application. This is pretty normal with GUI applications. It may happen on your system. It may not happen on your system. If it does happen, all you need to do is share your X server run this command right here. I'll leave it in the description down below. And if we go and run the application again, this time it works properly. Now I mentioned the default container is going to be using Ubuntu. So obviously there is a way to change the default container. So we can actually go and check our containers because it is just using distro box in the background with distro box list. Any of the boxes that make mention of Apex are being managed by Apex. This one here is using Ubuntu. If we want to use something else though, we can go and do Apex install dash dash APK, that will install from Alpine, dash dash AUR, that will install from the Arch Linux AUR, and dash dash DNF to install it from Fedora. There's also a dash dash apt that will explicitly say install from Ubuntu. For the vast majority of things though, installing from Ubuntu or Fedora is probably going to be fine. But there might be some edge cases where you do want to use the AUR, so it is nice that it's being exposed. But no matter which command you use, or if you're using Apex installed by itself, it's going to do that same setup process of making the box, installing the core packages, setting up the box, and then installing the thing inside of it, so I'm not going to show you it again. 
Now you might be asking, how do we check what we have installed? Well, that depends on what you mean by installed. So if you want to check everything available inside of Apex, you can do Apex list. This won't just list what you have installed, this will list out everything available in the box. If we go Apex list dash I, this will show what is installed, but not what is explicitly installed. It's going to list out everything installed in the distro. So your packages are going to be in there, but so is everything else that Ubuntu has, which does mean it is going to be accessible to go and run it. But it doesn't help you filter down to what you really care about. You probably don't care about, you know, ZSH in the box because you probably already have ZSH available. But let's say you did find a package you care about, like say Vim GTK3. Let's say I want to know more details about it. If we do Apex show and then the name of the package, this will give us the details we generally expect to see from a package manager, where it comes from, the version, uh, you know, who maintains it, what it provides, the dependencies, just pretty normal stuff. But let's say you want to search for a package, but don't want to install it. Well, Apex search, and then let's just search for Vim by itself and see what it provides. It is going to do a search on both the names and the description and give us this giant list of things. And then once again, you can take this name, put it in the show command, put it in the install command, and just use it like any package manager would be used. And really, it's as simple as that. There are a ton of other commands, and most of them are pretty self-explanatory. You can like initialize a container to get rid of everything inside of it. You can remove a package. You can export something so it's available as a desktop file. You can unexport it. You can upgrade the boxes, but there's nothing really crazy being done there. So as I said earlier, it's pretending to be a package manager. It works like you typically think of one, and it doesn't really matter that DistroBox is being used on the back end. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's not trying to do anything crazy and give you these weird and wacky options like Pac-Man does. All it is, is pretty much just apt, but with a different back end. And speaking of that back end, I know I used a non-destructive command earlier, but that doesn't mean that that's all you can do. Anything that can be done normally with DistroBox is going to work exactly the same way doing it in an Apex managed box. So if I don't like this box, I can just go DistroBox RM and then take the ID here. And okay, I have to stop it first. But if I had already stopped the box, I could delete it. But most of the time, you don't need to use DistroBox directly. The option is always going to be here though, if you need to access one of the more advanced commands that isn't being exposed in Apex, or maybe you want to go and install something in a box that isn't supported in Apex, like you want to use Arch Linux directly, not Arch Linux through the AUR. You want to go and use Gen2, you want to use Void. Those are not supported in Apex, so you will need to go and do that by hand. But providing this simple to work with interface is going to address probably like 95, 99% of use cases that the typical user is going to have. But unless it's super edge case, you probably won't need to do so anyway. I didn't mention this earlier, but there is also an Apex enter command. This will go inside the box and let you manage it like that. So even for that, you don't need to use DistroBox, but go ahead and use it if you feel more comfortable doing so. Also, you've probably noticed that I'm not running vanilla OS. By the way, I'm on Arch. So... Apex actually is available in the AUR. It's been here for a couple of weeks and I've been using it. I've had zero issues whatsoever. You can run it. Do keep in mind, it is made for vanilla OS. So if there are problems with the package, come to the package first. And then if it's actually a problem with the application, then go and report it. 
don't go and flood the developer with reports about the AUR package, it is not his problem. And that is going to be it for me. So let me know your thoughts about Apex in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Yep, we're going to go with that. Um, <laughs> check out the links in the description. Uh, I'm going to go. See you guys later.